Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host, Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhaus, here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock PM. If you want to ask us a question or if you have a real estate need, give us a call at 267-988-2000. So, who is Addicted to Real Estate? <clears throat> We're full-time real estate investors. We buy houses. So if you have a house you're looking to sell and you'd like us to uh, talk to you about it, please give us a call. If you're a realtor, we have an investor-friendly agency, three of them actually, one in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. And we focus on real estate investors as our agents as well as our clients and we like to try to bridge the gap between realtors traditional realtors and investors because we feel that the two uh, businesses being a realtor and being a real estate investor really synergize very well together uh, we also have investor education meetings where we teach people every month we have a meeting and we focus on teaching people how to buy houses with none of their own money and teach them all the amazing techniques that I have spent a lifetime learning, and so have my partners. You can check us out and learn more about us at AddictedToRealEstate.com. So how's everybody doing today? Doing great. I'm doing great. It was a it was a nice Valentine's weekend a couple of days ago, and uh, the weather's finally starting to get a little bit warmer. Man, was it cold this weekend. And Jeremy, you were in Colorado. you you got to tell us a little bit about the trip. It wasn't cold at all, actually. It was 65 degrees in Denver. That was crazy. And wow. uh, so you guys are at like single digit, you know, uh, temperatures and, and I was uh, skiing and it was like 40s in Aspen and, and it was uh, 65 in Denver when I got to Denver to take the plane back. So that was um, yeah, totally different. It's bone chilling cold in Philadelphia. Yeah, it was. As a matter of fact, I, you know, I, I always worry about those days when the temperatures in the one digits, you know, waiting for a tenant to call and say, my pipes froze. And I'm so happy that this year still hasn't happened and uh, I'm very uh, – we had six more weeks to make sure it doesn't happen. I'll tell you what. Every time we go down to Florida, I, I look at the homeless people down there and I say, wow, you know, they, number one, they should go on strike and all buy homes. But secondly, <laughs> the uh, – the, I don't know how somebody can live in Philadelphia and be homeless. Wouldn't you rather be in Florida and be homeless? Jeez, I mean I feel bad for the people here that sit you know, on the grates and whatnot. It's um, – it's really, you know, single digit. That's what makes me think of that. Is, I mean, just single digit, digit temperatures. I can't, yeah, I can't imagine being It's got to be rough if you're homeless, yeah. yeah. All right, enough about the weather. What I want to know is did you buy us a villa in Aspen <laughs> while you were down there? I'll tell you what. The management fees for these uh, villas, it's a condo hotel, and uh, 50%, they take 50% of that's all the bookings. Common, yeah, 50% of all the bookings. Plus, there's a homeowners association based on the square footage, and um, taxes are... All that, I don't know that it makes sense. I don't think anybody, I think the people that invest money in, in those um, ski in, ski out condos aren't making any money. They're just look. They're just parking their money someplace. Most of them own them free and clear, and they're just parking their money someplace that they think is going to go up in value. Hmm. And uh, I don't know that, you know, that's kind of in our model of what we want to do. I so like, you buy a property that doesn't make money, and you sit on it for a while, and then you eventually sell it to a guy for even more so he can lose money as well. Is that the plan? I don't think they're losing money, but they're just not – I think they're just parking it there. I think that's – you know, okay. there's people that have a chunk of cash. They want to park it in something that's not going down in value. And some people buy properties for ego, and it may just be, hey, look, I've got a villa in Aspen. Yeah, or you personal know, use yeah. or whatever, yeah. That's why I want one. Yeah. <laughs> it it doesn't right, sound like the good deal like C.S. to Keys. Yeah, sure. So, Jeremy, tell us about the questions. What kind of questions did we get this week? Yeah, we got several questions here. And if you have questions, you can email them to questions at addictedtorealestate.com. Uh, the first question we got is, uh, does addicted real estate lend money to buy houses? And uh, how, how do we find good deals like you guys? And the last question was, is it possible to work with addicted real estate on some level? So, all good questions. Larry, what's, uh, what are we going to focus on today? So uh, we're going to um, we're going to talk about what's going on with addicted to real estate with the agency and uh, some other cool stuff, and where we're going to be investing next. You're going to tell us where you're investing. I'll, I'll tell you where I'm investing. I, I'd like to invest with you guys in Siesta Keys, but since I'm not going to do that, I'm going to stay local. Why wouldn't you? You know, we don't own every house in Siesta Key. 
All right, guys, stick around because we've got something really exciting to learn about. Larry's going to tell us where he's going to be investing next. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, they pay 90% commission. Work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7701. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copier, scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate. This is Jeremy Ricci, and we're going to go over in this segment questions that were emailed in for this week. The first question on the agenda here is, uh, does Addicted to Real Estate lend money to buy houses? No, uh, we don't lend money. However, we do partner with people on deals. So if you have a good deal and you need to raise the money for it, we're happy to partner with you. Uh, we not in the uh, business of making interest. We're in the business of making deals. So Why don't we lend money? You know... I we're right now in in, um, in acquisition mode, so I you know I think it, later on in life I probably would get in the business of lending money, but right now I want to buy stuff. You know I, I don't want to um, I don't want to just make interest on money. I want to yeah. own real estate. Someone's going to go up in value and have all the other benefits of owning it. So you know if somebody's doing a flip or something like that, I, I'd rather participate in the project than just be a, a passive lender. All right. Yep. In fact, yeah, aren't there a lot of rules in, in, in lending too? I mean, don't, don't don't go through them because you know, we only have uh, an hour in the show. But but aren't there a lot of rules? Yeah, sure. I mean, you you know, when you're dealing when you're dealing with business purposes, they're generally like a business purposes loan is generally more lax than uh, lending to a consumer. Like if you're doing and you're subject to that Dodd Frank rule, or as uh, my mentor John Shaw would say, Dodd Dodd Frankenstein. <laughs> well, but, let's know. let's think about the question that was emailed in to us because I believe that the uh, the author of this email, what they were wondering is if uh, we would lend them money to do a real estate transaction. Don't you guys think that's what the purpose of the email was? Yeah, sure. And I, and I don't, you know, I think it's just they're looking to to raise money. And can we help them raise the money? Sure. We have private investors. We have access to a network of private investors. Um, but, well, you know, for, gonna... for doing something like that, I'd like to be involved in the deal. Of course. So that's really the criteria. I mean, we have uh, an, an enormous amount of private investors, 26 years in the business. We've accumulated a great deal of money that's accessible for really good deals. So if you're an investor out there and you've got a good deal but you can't fund it, call your buddies at Addicted to Real Estate, especially your buddy Phil Falcone. All right? <laughs> Well, I, I also think that, you know, one thing to talk about with raising private money we talk about on the show is that these are relationship-based loans. 
a lot of the people that we've raised, we've cultivated a relationship with. And that's why I'd, I'd like to be involved in those deals because I want to know that I'm going to maintain that relationship. And if I refer somebody and I'm not involved in it and the deal goes bad, you know, that's going to tarnish a relationship that I worked very hard to build up. So that's why, not, you know, I think anybody that's looking to, to make a deal happen, we can definitely facilitate that. But, you know, right. we need to be a part of it. One of the things I tell people who come to our meetings all the time is that the, the, the greatest thing that we get out of it I mean, we charge $20 to come to the meeting, so it's not like we're getting rich off the attendance fee. We want to partner with you. If you live in a certain section where we're not actively looking for deals, let's just say, for example, you live in Roxborough, and you know of a couple of potential flips there that maybe we don't know about. We can't be everywhere. So, you know, call us up, 267-988-2000. Let us know about the deal. Possibly we will match our private money to your deal. We'll partner together, and we'll all make a few bucks. It's, it's a beautiful uh, relationship. Addicted to real estate, we want to work with other people. So that's a great thing that we get out of the meetings. And if you come to our meetings, you sort of become part of the family. We get to know you. And every one of our meetings, it's really two meetings in one meeting. First, there's the meeting where we have the actual formal meeting where we discuss a particular topic of about real estate investing, and we give you some great education. But the real meeting is the second meeting. It's the meeting after the meeting. That's where the actual deals get done. I sell houses at those meetings. I lend money at those meetings. And uh, you can do all that just for buying me a beer. Yeah, and want to shout out to, uh, to a couple of people who attended yesterday's meeting or last night's meeting, Josh and... And, uh, and Zach, who always shows up, and Steve, and Ron, those guys are like, they're, they're awesome people. And you have to meet them the next time you're meeting it. And, and they can find out about the next meetup at Addicted to Real Estate with the number 2.com. Sign up for the newsletter, and you'll find out what the next meeting is. So our next question is, how do I find good deals like you guys? Do we find good deals? How do they, how do they know we find good deals? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Actually, we find great deals. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, some of the some of them are, are so simple. Some of the ways to find good deals are so simple that you, you really just need to reach out and do it. I mean, frankly, I scour the MLS just about every day. You know, I, I think last week Phil and I were talking about I put in five offers on houses. I have to tell you that every one of those houses happened to be on the MLS. Uh, it's unusual, I admit, but they all happen to be on the MLS. They were all good deals right in the MLS. And there's two ways you can access the MLS. You can access the MLS by hiring a real estate agent, and I'm hoping you're smart enough to call me, Larry Steinhaus. I'm even going to give my phone number, 215-378-9190, and I will be able to find good deals for you on the MLS. Or if you really want to take the next step, become a real estate agent, join our agency. We're investor-friendly. We'll teach you how to use the MLS differently than most other agents and you'll be able to find incredible deals. Plus, as you've, you've probably heard before, we're still paying for your real estate license. So if you want to come and join us, we will pay for your real estate license. Give me a call, 215-378-9190. But so much for the commercial, let's go back to some other great th things that we're doing, such as marketing, right? You guys are doing some crazy marketing. What are you doing, Jeremy? Yeah, we can do postcards. We do letters. Uh, you have to really define a, a good list of potential sellers. Uh, like you said, Larry, there, there's people that are on the MLS that are definitely sellers, but we don't know if they're motivated to sell. They're just sellers. They're, and when we do marketing, we, we send out mail to um, people that are potentially motivated to do something. They have a life-changing event, whether it's um, um, maybe a divorce or, or um, probate where somebody died and they don't need the house anymore. Or, you know, there's even things that – that you wouldn't be able to look up on public records, like um, somebody just had uh, had a child, and all of a sudden they need they need to outgr they sure. outgrow their house. Sure. So there's all sorts of reasons that people sell a house, and uh, you could some of those you can target. And others are you know we often do I often do stuff that the uh, real estate agents do, and farm a particular neighborhood, take a neighborhood that's like a first time home buyer house, like a townhome neighborhood, and just blanket message. We even have uh, little 3M uh, Post-it notes that have, uh, hey, notice, we're, our company's buying houses in your neighborhood, and we stick them on doors. And that's a, that's a great way to shotgun a neighborhood, especially, let's say, where it's row homes or townhouses, when you can hit door to door to door to door or get somebody to do it for you and uh, have people respond to that. So one thing that I, I do, too, that's, that's kind of a little guerrilla tactic is um, I pull over the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> if I see a, a male guy walking around, I'll stop him and say, hey, you know, do you know of any houses here that are uh, 
of you know, available for sale. I saw the ones with the signs, but is there any that you know of that don't have a sign yet that might be coming up for sale? Maybe a tenant moved out in the middle of the night or there was um, one that hasn't, you know, had mail for a while. There's oftentimes you see like uh, newspapers stacked up on the front steps of, of these or, or you see uh, pizza advertisements on the door hanger, you know, the door hangers that people put around. Maybe even the ones that we put around. You go back and you drive by and you see they're still there three weeks from now. Sure. And, you, and you, wow, you know, I put that on the door door three weeks ago. Or there's a, a pizza delivery thing that's all faded. You know that house is empty, and it's worth tracking down the owners. So that's a, that's a good way to find deals. And another way that we find deals is we are uh, the owners of two I buy houses stores. That's not something you see every day. We have one of them on 309, right across the street from Zoto's Diner in Line, Lexington, PA. And our second store is at the corner of Byberry in York, dead center in the town of Hatboro, downtown Hatboro, Byberry in York. If you're ever driving by, come on in and talk to us. Uh, I personally work out of that store. I'm there all the time. And you'll see a giant I Buy Houses trailer out front. And uh, open the open signs, the neon open signs are blinking like crazy. Come on in and talk to me, and let's see if we can figure out ways to help each other. You know, the other way I would say that is a great way to find deals is just word of mouth referrals. You got to tell everybody what you do that you're looking to buy houses, sure. and uh, you'll get people. I mean, heck, put it on Facebook. You know what I did one time is I took a picture of a really ugly house that I came across. I think it was actually a shed that was all like graffiti all over it, and it was in the, one of the back alleys of Sarasota behind the village where we uh, we invest in Sarasota and Siesta Key. And I took a picture of this ugly house with graffiti on it, and I put it on Facebook saying, looking to buy ugly houses. Maybe not ugly as this, but does anybody have anything? And you get referrals. You get people, you know, the social media, there's some power to that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have, uh, we, we've created a system, too, for, for the – for the internet, for a web pa- capture page that's usable for you to find leads, and it's actually great to post on Facebook. If you go to easyoutrealestate.com/addicted, you'll see one of the sample pages. Actually, it's a live active page. You can actually fill in if you wanted to. If you're selling a house, you can actually fill in, and we'll, we'll uh, Jeremy or Phil will contact you on that on that web page. But also at the bottom, you'll see get a website like this, and literally it costs you fifty dollars to create it. And fifty dollars a month for us to maintain it, which is an awesome price. And we'll tell you more about that when you, if you click on it, it'll tell you more about the, the cool things it does. But honestly, for fifty dollars, it's a great deal. Again, it's easyoutrealestate.com/addicted. Yeah, and the great thing about what uh, you did with that, Larry, is having the capture mechanism. So if you're putting marketing out there, let's say you're putting an ad on Craigslist, or you put something out on Facebook, or you're even sending letters or postcards out, if you put that capture website in your advertising, it's just a call to action. It gives people a place to go to put in their information and uh, be able to find out at least, uh, you know, somebody's raising their hand saying, yeah, I have interest. I want to talk to somebody about that. And and having that mechanism that's working for you when you're sleeping, somebody could be up late at night thinking about, geez, what am I going to do with my house? And they go to that, they see your ad and they go to that website and they put their information in. When you wake up in the morning, you, you got to lead. So that's the best exactly. thing about internet marketing. Okay, you cre- I love making videos. You can check me out on YouTube. Just look up Addicted to Real Estate. You can make a video, and then you can die, and the video will still be selling things for you <laughs> or, or teaching people things that you care about. We'd so, miss you, Phil, if you died. Yeah. Well, no, you won't. You just have to go to YouTube. That's I'll right. be there forever. Okay. <laughs> so let's get to our third question. Is it possible to work with Addicted to Real Estate on some level? The answer is absolutely. Uh, we do occasionally... Uh, work with people and let them become an apprentice at our office. So if you're interested in learning about the real estate investing business, it's something we we would like to get to know you first before we get into a relationship like an apprentice. And a great way to get to know us is to come to our monthly meetings. Our next one is on March 16th. And if you just go to addictedtorealestate.com, put your name and email address in, you'll, I'll send you an invitation every week to our meeting and let you know what we're going to be talking about, where we're going to be meeting, and when the next meeting is. One a month we do, usually on Wednesday nights. Right now we're doing them in Warminster, but we move the meetings around all over the city. We've had them in Jersey. We have them all over the place. Uh, another way that you can you know, work with Addicted to Real Estate on some level is to partner with us. We already talked about that. If you find a great deal, look, we, we love flips. We love making money, and we don't mind 
if the deal is a strong deal and there's a great potential to make money, we don't mind chopping it up with somebody else. So give us a call, 267-988-2000. If you've got a deal and you want to talk to us about it, we can fund your deal as long as it's a good one. It's got to be a good deal, okay? So you can always give us a call and talk to us about that. Those are just a couple of ways that you can work with Addicted to Real Estate. Another way would be go get your real estate license. If you'd like to have access to people like Jeremy, Larry, and myself, an easy way to do it is to get your real estate license, or if you already have one, come over to Addicted to Real Estate, move to our company, and learn about the investing world, which, if I had to guess, is probably the reason you got your real estate license in the first place. Most realtors will admit that they got into the business because they wanted to be investors. And then they kind of got into a rut. And, and we think you, can sh you should do both. You should be an investor half of the time, and you should be a realtor half the time. And it works great for the three of us. I think you become actually a more brilliant investor when you are a realtor, or a real estate agent, I should say. Anyway, um, so uh, where are we going here? So we had some... We had some it, we had some uh, some good stuff going on. What what was going on exciting in your world, Jeremy? You know, I think that um, real estate is the most exciting thing to me. So I I, I mean that's what I've been uh, even when I was out in Aspen, I'm, I'm looking at these houses. I brought home a brochure of all these houses, anywhere from like three hundred fifty thousand to one point nine million dollars for these like condos. We we were in Denver. I had some some time in between the. Uh, the time I got back to Denver and my flight. So what do you think I was doing in that time? Driving around looking at houses. I was in uh, Aurora. Went to Aurora where that whole like movie theater thing happened. With the, man, I went drove right by that place looking at some of the rentals down there. It's amazing how how different it is in Denver and in Aurora than it is in the Philadelphia area. The housing stock, how you know how the way things look there. So um, you know we're we're addicted to real estate. If you guys have questions, you want to. Email them into us. You can email them at questions at addicted to real estate.com. We obviously love this business. We love talking real estate and um, love taking questions. So I'm glad that uh, we had people email in these, these last questions. We, there's always ways to, to partner with us or work with us. We have, uh, if you're an investor and you, you want to, you need an agent, give us a call. If you're a, a broker or a, or a real estate uh, agent or a, Realtor, you can always call us and hang with us. Come hang with us, right? Hang, the, hang your license. So in the next segment, we're going to talk about the topic of the day, and that's what's, on the, what's next on our radar. So we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Addicted to Real Estate. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, they pay 90% commission. Work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7701. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. 
You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701. 215-942-7701. All right, welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We're going to talk about today's focus, which is what is next on the radar for Addicted to Real Estate. So we're going to tell you a little bit about the things that we're looking to invest in and why we're doing it. First of all, let me start by when I am flush with cash. I typically don't want to do a lot of flips because, let's face it, flipping really isn't real estate investing. Flipping is, think of each house that you buy like a business. And uh, when you buy a house for the purpose of flipping it, you're basically buying it for one price and you're going to fix it up and you're going to sell it. So in the end, it's not much different than a job. You're going to work on the thing and in the end, you're going to get paid for the work that you do. You're not getting paid by the hour. You're getting paid by your investment. But... I'm merely distinguishing the difference between a buy and hold piece of real estate and a flip. So uh, when I do need cash, however, I'm actively looking for flips. And I'd say right now I, I took a look at my bank account over the weekend and I thought I ought to do a couple of flips. So if you know of some potential flippable properties out there, give your new buddy Phil Falcone a call at 267-988-2000. So what kind of stuff do I want to invest in if I plan on holding it? Well, I kind of have a very simple uh, level of criteria. Most real estate investors, when they buy a house, they um, they pick up a row home somewhere and they're satisfied to make two, three hundred dollars a month. I try to do better than that because I still buy row homes, of course. I buy whatever makes sense, but I try to perform at a much higher level than that. What I like to call extreme cash flows. So, where do you get extreme cash flows? Three basic categories that I think you can get extreme cash flows. One of them is vacation rentals. That's why we buy in Florida and we rent them out for almost the entire year. Another way is executive suite centers. I have an office building called Executech Suites in Huntington Valley. It's a full service office suites where we give you the furniture, the telephones, the receptionist, the utilities, the whole gamut, and you just pay one price. And another great way to get extreme cash flow is student rentals. Now, I personally don't own any student rentals, but those are areas that I would say are great investments because you get a much higher rate of return on your investment than you would if you were just doing a traditional piece of real estate making a couple hundred dollars a month. So right now, I'm kind of focused on doing flips in the Philadelphia area and I'm doing my buy and holds in Sarasota. Now, why would I why would I do that? Why would I take these strategies, these different strategies, and and give you a geographic area for each one of them? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. I see a lot of upside potential in Sarasota. So, if you're going to be holding something, you want to be holding it uh, during a time when the house has the best chances of appreciating. And the market in Sarasota is completely different from Philadelphia right now. Philadelphia, you know, we it depends. If you're talking about Bucks County, Montgomery County, Philadelphia is a big area. So I don't necessarily want to get into talking about what I think the market's going to do there. But I think if I'm going to be doing flips, I want to be doing them someplace where I live. Because flips require a lot of my attention. i got to go to the house. i got to look at it. i got to check on the contractors. i got to be on top of it. So that's what I'm looking to do right now. I'd love to grab three or four flips in the next couple of weeks. So if you know of a a piece of property that you've got under contract and you can't raise the money for it, give us a call. You know, the other, you're talking about ultimate cash flow generators like these, um, you know, rentals on steroids really is what it is. Your value added real estate, you talked about vacation rentals, you talked about executive suite centers. These are all value added real estate. Another one that I thought of that we haven't done. That would be interesting. You know, the baby boomers are all coming of age, which makes Sarasota, like you said, a great investment or anything in Florida. When people retire, where do they go? They go south, right? So they go to the nice weather. So I think that's going to help with the appreciation. The other thing to consider with the baby boomers coming of age is what about like um, adult congregate living where where you have, um, you know, these senior centers and things like that. I mean, I think that's going to be on the horizon as another avenue where people can make a lot of money at value-added real estate. 
Um, I'm not talking about you know places where you have to serve food and things like that, but even just um, you know as people get older, they, they they maybe a spouse dies and they have to live by themselves. It might be a good idea to invest in um, you know six bedroom houses where people can each have a bedroom and uh, have somebody to live with. It's a, I think they call it adult congregate living. It's a, it's another value added thing that we might. Maybe we should look at it sometime in the future. Well, I, I think the baby boomer effect in general is something that you want to be looking at and how it relates to real estate. Because uh, one of the reasons we ended up in Sarasota was the, the town of Sarasota fell on the top ten of two completely separate lists. One of the lists was worst hit real estate markets in the United States. Sarasota was on that list. They took a beating down there. Now I'm going back to 2012. This was a list I pulled up in, in 2012. And it was on another list, which I found really interesting. It was on a list of top ten cities that people are moving to. So think about those two things for a second. The real estate prices are decimated, but people are still moving there because it's a beautiful area with lots of reasons that somebody would want to live there. In order for real estate prices to go up, you've got to have an increase in population. You know, could be illegal aliens are running across the border. That helps Texas. <laughs> Look at some of the numbers in Texas right now. They got amazing numbers. All right, on how where where are they all having ten babies or, or a million people a year running across the border? I'm not really sure. Okay, <laughs> probably a combination of both. But in Florida, you got baby boomers <clears throat> moving down there. The greatest, you know, uh, amount of people ever born in a certain time in in American history are all approaching the age of 65, 66, 67 right now. And that's a trend that's going to continue for quite a while. So all of these people are going to be moving down to Sarasota or are in the process of moving there now. It helps with population. It keeps an upward trend on real estate prices. Save me a room. Definitely save me a room. i got 15 more years to go to hit that, that age. So save me, save me a room in one of your places in Sarasota. So some of the places that I invest are a little bit different than you guys. I'm doing, I like the, um, I should say, fifty to $200,000 range of homes. And it's it's not that you can't make money in, in more expensive homes, but I like the idea of, you know, laying out a certain amount of money, maybe it's $100,000, and getting a return of 13 to 14% on my money in rents. So that's that's the numbers that I look at. In fact, you know, it's funny. I have a search on the MLS, and I'm telling you again, the MLS is a great place to search for homes. I have a search on the MLS that specifically tells me every day all the new homes that come on for under a hundred thousand dollars. What do you have to do to get access to the MLS? <laughs> you can do two things. One is you can call me, and I'll give you access, and I'll make the commission on it when I sell you the house. Or if you're real smart, you become a realtor with us. We'll even pay for your license. Get access to the MLS and make your own commission on your own deals. And if I don't know what I'm doing and I become a realtor at Addicted to Real Estate, and then I have a question, would you guide me through that? Well, anybody but you, Phil. Because <laughs> <laughs> some of your questions are, you know, they're just so high level. <laughs> like, where's the nearest gas station? <laughs> well, I only ask you the hard questions to see if I can stump you. <laughs> have you stumped me yet? Mm, out in the parking lot I did, I think. <laughs> I, I hit him up with a question out in the parking lot while we were walking in here, and he, he was struggling with it. I, we are at City Line Ave, and, you know, the we're very high up in the altitude. Maybe the air is thin. It's not, not as thin as Colorado. Hey, did they have oxygen bars in Colorado? I ain't going back there, but did they have <laughs> oxygen bars still in Colorado? I don't know, but, you know, during the Super Bowl, they, all the, I, was, I found it funny that the Super Bowl took place in San Francisco. But all the guys on the Denver team were breathing oxygen. Like, wait a second. You guys are used to this uh, mile-high stuff. What the heck is it? <laughs> that? Have, that could have two meetings for Colorado. I did kind of <laughs> notice that watching the Super Bowl. Yeah, they had oxygen masks on. Yeah. Took you guys way off topic. Though. Yeah, way right, off topic. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, Larry, the one thing that, that you mentioned about price point for real estate is um, so, some of that range. You're talking about, in our area, maybe the median price range in the suburbs is about 225 mm -hmm. I would say, somewhere around sure. there. And by buying in that median price range and below, you're getting the first-time homebuyer stuff, which has much more flexibility. That's the stuff that I think moves better. When when the, um, the recession happened, a lot of the flipper, our flipper friends, got in trouble because they were buying these high-end homes. And there's only one exit strategy to flip a, a house like that is find a sell, find a buyer. Right. When when you're buying in the price ranges that you're talking about, if even if it's a flip, you could sell it. And if it doesn't sell, you could always put a tenant in, and that tenant will cover. 
the rent. It's pretty tough to um, cover the rent when you're in in our market when you're over that two hundred fifty thousand dollars, let's say. Although you know, I was talking to some guys on on my trip uh, that were from San Francisco. Get this, four million dollar rental, four wow. million dollar rental, and right. and they're getting you know he's he's renting to like a CEO of a major technology corporation. Uh, there's other guys that are in uh, Orange that's a, County. That's a single family home. A single family house, yeah, as a rental. He's renting to a CEO of a major company. These guys in um, Orange County, or their their rentals are like seven hundred thousand dollars. They're getting now the rents. I don't think makes sense. I mean, the reason they make sense for these guys because they're free and clear. But you're talking, let's say, a four thousand dollars a month for a seven hundred thousand dollar house. I don't know. Sure. I, I kind of like the one percent rule where yeah, you know, you're, say, buying, you're buying a hundred hundred thousand dollar house, you get a thousand bucks a month. You buy a two hundred thousand dollar house, you get two thousand a month. That you know, if you can find numbers like that, that make a lot of sense. If you own it free and clear and there's no debt service, I guess uh, you don't you don't have to have those numbers. But um, but man, some some amazing. But I, I just don't want to get stuck with stuff that can't rent out for more than what the mortgage payment would be. So. You know, you know, it's scary. Another part of something you said, the fact that a major CEO is renting and not owning his own home is bizarre on top of it. I don't know. I mean, I could see that if you're in a, in a corporation and you don't know if you're going to be employed with him 12 months later. So I could see it making sense. Well, $15,000 on a $4 million house. What would the mortgage on a $4 million house be? More than $15,000, right? It may be, yeah, depending yeah. on depending on how much you interest you, rates yeah, and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. and yeah. also how much you put down. Sure. So sometimes you can actually afford a bigger lifestyle if you rent than you could if you bought. Now you're not going to get the benefits, you're not going to get the upside appreciation, all that, but you could get the benefits of living inexpensively. Remember when the recession happened? There's all these huge houses that that were vacant. Certainly, you could increase your lifestyle by renting one of those. Oh, sure. Instead sure. Of so the 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 importance of owning your own home. Um, you know, that's just a personal decision. But I would say I know people that don't own their own home, yet they own an investment property. Yeah, I've done that several times, actually. Yeah. When I, even when I bought my first properties, I was renting. And recently I was renting for just a little while uh, while, while owning a bunch of rental properties. It's kind of, in fact, I actually moved in to one of my investment properties because I had a little trouble renting it. And I said, you know what? I might as well just move into it. So it was kind of a funny, you know, it's kind of a different, it is a different way of living. Uh, the, the way most Americans live is go find a home, go find a home, go find a home. I'm just looking to make money. Yeah, and, and the asset, your your personal residence, as, as uh, some people say, is not an asset until you sell it, right? I mean, it's it's sort of an asset, but but uh, the assets that what I call an asset is something that rolls off positive cash flow. So, yeah, it's not truly an investment. It's more it's more of a way of life. It's an expense. Yeah, it's an expense. It, it and, an expense and the expense yes. could go up in value. It could not go up in value. But uh, the rental real estate that throws off cash flow to me, that's that's the assets. That's in the assets column. Hey, there there are times when it makes sense to rent. Like if if the real estate prices are going down. I remember when when prices were crashing in 2007, 2008. There were gurus on TV saying, "Sell your house and go rent." Um, I mean, I, that's kind of ridiculous if you really are happy with your house and you like it. But if you're a single guy just living somewhere that you happen to own, I don't know, you might be able to make sense of it. So another thing on my personal radar right now is, you know, I've talked about doing flips, but there's other ways that we might be able to help you if you've got a deal that could be a potential wholesale deal. And maybe you uh, you got the house under contract, but you can't find a buyer for it. I happen to have a massive list of real estate investors, um, and I can blast out your particular property and maybe help you find a buyer for it. So that's something to consider. If you've got a deal that you think is a, a really great deal for a real estate investor to buy, you might want to contact me, Phil, at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, Phil, at addictedtorealestate.com. Send me some pictures. Tell me a little bit about the house. And maybe I'd be willing to work with you and blast it out to my list and see if we could uh, collectively find a buyer for you. Phil, you want to explain real quick what wholesaling is? Because it is kind of an industry jargon that um, a lot of people might not be familiar with. So wholesaling is, is a pretty unique thing uh, that I know people can, could get involved with. Well, explain it a little bit. Well, wholesaling is a very simple concept, a great way to make some money in, in any real estate uh, cycle, and that's basically you get a house under contract. Let's just suppose hypothetically you find a house. It's a, it's a, in a neighborhood where the houses are a hundred thousand dollars, but this one is in dire need of repairs, and you get it under contract for say forty five thousand um, dollars, and you have full intentions of buying this house and settling on it and uh, and fixing it up, but maybe you have trouble raising the money, 
And then uh, you bump into me at a, at a coffee shop, and we start talking, and you say, uh, I'll tell you what, I can't get the money to buy this house, but maybe you could. And I would, I would say, okay, well, you know, I'll buy the house. Instead of you buying it, I'll buy it. So I buy the contract from you. And you got it under contract for $45,000. i am going to buy it from you uh, for 48000 So at settlement, you're going to get $3,000. It's, it's like a uh, consultation fee. Okay, it's a finder's fee. You make $3,000 for finding the property, and I get the property, and I settle on it. The important thing is to have it under contract, because then you have the right to resell that contract. So you're basically finding deals and selling them to deal hunters. Okay, so coming up next, we're going to talk about, you might be out there, and you're looking to quit your job and become a full-time real estate investor. There's a lot of people come to our meetings and say that feeling, that's what they want to do. So stick around. We're going to talk about that next. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, they pay 90% commission. Work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addicted to real estate with the number two dot com. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7600. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate. This next segment, we're going to dive a little bit more into what we were talking about before the break, which is um, the business of buying and selling. So real estate investing, I mean, I, I differentiate it as um, a real estate investor is somebody that buys for the long term, but you can be in the business of real estate, uh, either as a real estate agent, or you could be a, a flipper, fix and flip like they do on uh, the TV shows, or you could be a wholesaler like we were talking about before, where you find deals and, and, and uh, give them to deal hunters. So uh, let's talk a little bit about that. A, a real estate, uh, you, you know, if you're real, in the business of real estate, I was call that a used house dealer. <laughs> kind of like a used car dealer, well right? <laughs> but there, there is this. Um, you can be a dealer in real estate and just buy and sell. And some people do that because they want to replace their income. Maybe they don't like their job and they want to re- use, develop skills to invest in real estate. And as you, there's a certain progression of skills that you need to be in the investing business. The first thing is finding good deals, right? Whether you're an investor as a, a landlord or you're in the business of buying and selling, the first thing you need to do is find good deals. So a lot of times what people do is they'll be a bird dog. They'll actually find deals and and pass them on to somebody else and not uh, do all the other steps like renovations. 
The renovations takes another skill set where you have to build up that skill, to ha- how to estimate repairs, how to complete those repairs, and, and do the project management behind that. The other thing that you have to manage is, is as a landlord, you need to manage tenants, and you have to learn that skill set. So oftentimes people start out with wholesaling because they want to just learn that entry-level skill of finding the deals and the management side of things. They're not ready for that yet. So that's a, it's a good way to make money. I mean, a lot of these wholesalers, they make three, five grand for every deal that they that they turn over. They're, they're finding the deals. They build up a buyer's list. They market those deals out to the buyer's list. Certainly, we'd like to be on that list if you're finding deals and you want somebody to give a professional opinion about whether or not it's a good deal or not. I'd like to get a call and, and, and see if the, the deal meets our needs because we're always looking for deals. But I think the, that's a great way to get started in the business, being a bird dog or wholesaling and getting those properties under contract uh, first and then and looking for buyers without lifting a finger on the rehab. And a lot of people don't know that you can do that. You don't have to buy, fix, and sell. You can buy and sell without fixing and uh, pass it on to a rehabber. And there's other levels too, like what we call clean and sweep. Sometimes we buy a house, we clean it, we throw out all the trash, we paint it, and we put it back up for sale. You know, you don't get the margins that you'd get if you did a total blown out rehab, but not every house needs a total rehab. So the clean and sweep is kind of a middle of the road uh, approach. You, you, you do a little bit of work to it. Maybe you do some landscaping, you fix some of the real obvious uh, eyesores. But you don't repair the whole house. You leave it for somebody else who's willing to maybe move into it and, and do some work. You know, I, I want to take a step back to something Jeremy was saying. Um, as the broker of the agency of Addicted to Real Estate, i got to be careful to warn people that if they don't do wholesaling correctly, correctly, they're actually practicing real estate without a license. And also bird dogging can be considered practicing real estate without a license. So be really careful to know the rules and the laws on how to wholesale. And the most important thing about wholesaling is you must have the property under contract. You can't just say, my friend is selling a property, I'll introduce you to him, give me $2,000. That's practicing real estate without a license. Um, in fact, I think in the buyer's briefcase you go through this, correct? The buyer's briefcase part that you have? Yeah, sure. We, The wholesaling part has... It definitely requires you to get, get the properties under contract. Once you have it under contract, you now have an equitable interest in the property, and that's an equitable interest that you can sell. So if you are a wholesaler, you know one of the n- unique things that you can do is um, once you have a property under the contract, your contract should include something that allows you to market that property, to show the property, put it on the MLS. I mean, how many wholesalers aren't putting things on the MLS? And that's something that we're an investor-friendly agency. We can do that. You should put it in your contract, and our we have this buyer's briefcase product, and we have a module on wholesaling, and that has a, a, a investor-friendly contract and a wholesale-friendly contract that allows you, as the person who, who gets the property under contract, to list that property in the MLS, which is a great resource. I mean, where are you going to get a, a bigger targeted market than the MLS? Oh, That's sure. where people are looking. Sure. So, you know, Larry, if somebody's a wholesaler and they, and they have the right paperwork – they could certainly list it with you, right? Give, oh, absolutely. Yeah. My first question is, you know, what is is let, let me see the let me see the contract that allows you to to, to post this on the MLS. Sure. If they have it, no problem. I'm 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 all for it. Yeah, and it's good. We put that right in our our contract in the buyer's briefcase. And if you want more information on that, just go to addictedtorealestate.com. You can see the buyer's briefcase and all the modules that we have there. But it's a great resource. I mean, one of the things people get into this business are scared of is the paperwork. So we have a lot of that paperwork. <laughs> they say, oh, my gosh, I don't know what paperwork to use. What am well, I going to use? They go to Staples or something. Or they they're go scared to because they don't want to end up in a lawsuit, and the proper paperwork will keep that from happening. Yes, and, of course, we're not attorneys or or, or, or accountants. So, you know, please have our paperwork reviewed by your attorney or accountant. We're not, but, but Larry, you know, we just have to say that. <laughs> Larry's in disclaimer mode today. Usually that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like last night when we talked about trust at the, at, at the meeting, I mean, Trust. What a great way to what a great way to buy properties. And you know, and, and you know, and again, you know, you know, again, we, we had what, we had this disclaimer three times last night. It's the same thing. You know, you, you have to tell people how to buy properties properly. Plus, if the property's in a trust and you're wholesaling it, it's nice, as you were saying, it's nice to move the property. Just move the beneficial interest of the trust, and and you're not even, and you, you're basically not even moving the contract. Yeah, sure. Or even if the you own a property in trust and the, and the deed's already recorded, you can sell the, the beneficial interest in that. Now, it could be a taxable event for transfer tax as far as that goes, but it's an easy way. You don't have to worry about you know the deed changing hands and, and, and having some privacy in the transaction, which we had talked about on, uh, on other episodes. 
Excellent. What I'd like to know is what is the origin of the word bird dog? Like, does that mean that you fly around to look for deals, and then when you find one, you start barking? No, no. What the heck does that – where does that come from? Since when do dogs fly? <laughs> no, it's actually – I think it originates from hunting when you have a, a a dog that goes into the bushes and flushes out the birds so that the, the guy with the shotgun has something to aim at. So, oh, okay. You know. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that would that would be good. Yeah. So, so, so basically somebody's out there scouring for deals. They flush the deals out of the woodwork. And then you uh, blow their brains out. <laughs> And next week we'll be yeah, discussing don't. Remington. No, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remington rifles, right? Yeah, we're talking. Not- <laughs> yeah, I mean, the houses work hard for us. You don't want to shoot them. <laughs> but we, you know, one of the reasons people are attracted to this business is because they don't like their current position in their job. And uh, if you do like your job, I mean, there's no reason that you shouldn't stay with it and do this part time. But if you don't like your job, Real estate might be the thing for you to, to replace it. You can replace it as a real estate agent and take on clients. You could become an agent and just buy deals for yourself. You could just uh, become a wholesaler, get deals under contract, You know, go knock on doors, pull over that mailman, send out marketing, get a yeah. website, all those things to, to attract deals and then, um, and then sell those deals. You know, a lot of people are tr- I'm sorry, a lot of people are trying to, they're thinking about retirement and the, the, you know, and, and most people don't have pensions anymore. You know, most companies have done away with pensions. In fact, it's only the government that's pretty much given you pensions now, right? So you buy a property, and by the time you pay it off, you retire, and you retire on the rental income. And there's the greatest pension you can ever have. The rents go up every year. The the property value goes up every year. If you need to access cash, you can access the cash. It's it's the it's the greatest retirement fund out there, in my opinion. It hedges inflation. It sure hedges inflation because as as prices of if you're on a fixed pension, let's say, a fixed monthly income, Social Security or whatever it may be, and you need to supplement that, it's nice to supplement it with something that goes up in value with the cost of living. So rent rent prices tend to go up in value with the cost of living. It makes sense, right? As people's sure. salaries go up, the uh, cost of you know commodities go up, so does the cost of rentals and the, and the value of houses too. So by, by sticking money in real estate, you're, you're hedging inflation. Well, you know, I, I meet a lot of people at these meetings who are looking to quit their job and become a full-time real estate investor. And the two things I always tell them to do is I say, get your real estate license so you can supplement your income, you know, with tens of thousands of dollars a year being a realtor while simultaneously looking for real estate deals that you can buy for yourself. And I sat down with somebody recently who wanted a little bit of guidance about how you would do both of these things. And one of the things that was funny about the conversation is when I told him how to be a real estate investor, I was basically talking about marketing, marketing by looking for deals. And then when I told him how to be a realtor, I was basically talking about marketing, marketing, looking for clients. My friends, when you're an entrepreneur, it all comes down to one thing, marketing. Businesses that fail, almost any kind of business there is, they fail most likely because they don't have good marketing or they're not doing any marketing at all. And if you want to be in this business, it's a business that typically the leads are generated through some form or better yet multiple forms of marketing. If you count the cost of our I Buy Houses stores and the utilities to keep those stores going and the I Buy Houses vehicles and the direct mail that we put out, we spend a tremendous amount of money Okay, how about our radio show? Do you think that's a way of getting some marketing out there? Of course it is. How about a TV show on YouTube called Addicted to Real Estate? How about having monthly meetings? Okay, and on top of all that, one of the most powerful ways to do marketing is just by being excited about what it is that you do. I went out for lunch uh, yesterday on Valentine's Day uh, with a real estate investor who was hanging with me. And a lady, we were talking about real estate investing, and a lady sitting at the table next to me basically said, I'm sorry, I I couldn't help but hear your conversation. She's eavesdropping a little bit and told me she was interested and always wanted to be a real estate investor. And, of course, I set up a meeting with her. And then the waitress said, oh, I'm looking to buy a house too. Uh, She's already working with a realtor, but she's looking to buy her first house. And I gave her some recommendations on where to go. My point to the story is, If you're excited about what you do, if you're addicted to real estate like we are, we're talking about it all the time, we're thinking about it all the time, it's all we want to do, it's all we're ever going to do, I can't even go out to a diner and have lunch without infecting other people with my addiction. 
You know, they say it's it's one of the basic human needs, right? Food, clothing, and what? Shelter. So I don't think uh, people are going to get tired of real estate. We're definitely addicted to it, and uh, it's a great business. So I recommend everybody get involved in real estate. Obviously, you can own your own home, but you take it one step further and own some other real estate and, and leverage the power of that leveraged growth when you have a – you're holding an asset that goes up in value and you have your tenants paying off the loan. It's, it's a great business. So uh, I'm still waiting for my new book to come out. Apparently, the production of this book has taken twice as long as it took me to write the book, which I find incredibly fascinating. And uh, uh, But anyway – my new book's coming out soon, and it's called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money. And if you don't believe that you can buy houses with none of your own money, then you've really got to come to our meetings and start hanging around with us and start listening to this show and start watching the TV show on YouTube and get yourself a copy of this book as soon as it's available. I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm getting really close to uh, having a conniption fit over the fact that this book is not completed. I'll take that up with some individual I'm meeting tomorrow. And when you get a radio show, you could also diss all your producers. Yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? All right, so let's see. we got a couple minutes left. Let me throw out some things to you, okay? If you're interested in being a sponsor or a guest on this show, give us a call at 267-988-2000. If you're in a business that's real estate related and you'd like to talk to us about Possibly being a guest or, you know, putting a commercial on the air on this show. It's a great place to do it because we've got thousands of real estate investors listening to this show every week. So give me a call, 267-988-2000. You can listen to our show every Thursday at 3 o'clock here at Talk860. It's WWDBAM.com as well. You can listen to the podcast. So if you missed a previous show, you can listen to the podcast there. So listen to our show every Thursday at 3 o'clock or check out the podcast at WWDBAM. Where can you get those podcasts? WWDB, w, oh, man, that's tough to say. WWDBAM.com. You know what? SoundCloud, I put, too. SoundCloud is, yeah, is where they're They're on SoundCloud. I also put them up on YouTube and Addicted to Real Estate. So if you miss our show, you might be able to find it. I don't put up every show, but I put up all the – you know, as many as I can. So you can, might be able to find it on YouTube if you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, Addicted to Real Estate. And, of course, finally, if you want to get your real estate license, I am going to pay for your real estate license. We're still doing this, and uh, one day we're going to stop. So I suggest you call me right away, 215-378-9190. Ask for me, and I will pay for your real estate license. Thanks for listening. This has been a, another great show, guys. I love it. I, I love coming here every week. It's awesome. Thanks for listening to Addicted to Real Estate. We'll see you next week.